if we enjoy drawing ourselves, most of us have artists whose drawings have particularly inspired us on our journey. They're the artists whose drawings for us in our minds, we would like our drawings to look more and more like, where we would love to have their technique, their style, their finished artworks. So then, is there a productive way we can have this happen? Can we somehow work towards their artworks, not just inspiring our artworks, but also informing our artworks, actually having an impact on what we do? I think there is, but let me first explain what I think we shouldn't do, a very unproductive way to go about it, and then to explain a way we can helpfully use the drawings that so inspire us to actually influence our drawings more. If we want to draw more like our favorite artists, the most obvious way to do this is to start to copy their drawings. That somehow we will absorb their techniques into our techniques and that our drawings will start to look more like theirs. It's not an unrealistic assumption. And when we copy their work, we will almost certainly get a much nicer looking drawing than the ones that we do ourselves, the ones that we originally do. For this reason, it can actually even become a habit because it's far more satisfying what we see in front of us at the end. The problem is when we then go to do our own drawing, maybe from something in front of us or from a photo, it's like we haven't done those really nice looking drawings from the drawings of others. We still really don't know where to start, what to do. And our drawings look no different. They certainly look no more like these inspiring artworks for all the time we've spent copying them. In some ways, when we do this, as understandable as it is, it's almost like we want to cannibalize the drawings of others, that if we copy their drawings, it's somehow like eating them up and what's in their drawings becomes part of us and will come out in our drawings. Let me explain briefly why this just doesn't work. And it's important to understand because it actually sets the stage for a more productive way we can use the drawings of the artists who inspire us to actually benefit our own drawing. It's important to understand what happens when we draw, what the actual process is. So we see a subject, whether it's a photo or from life or our imagination, and if it's our imagination, that just means we're referring to things we've seen in the past and stored away as a reference into our mind. And what we need to do now is to translate what we're seeing or imagining into marks somehow on the paper. We need to take something that's in one form, the photo say, as in this example that you're watching now, and and change it, translate it into something different. It's not going to be the same. No one's going to mistake my drawing for a photo. So we're not, we're not doing the same thing. We're translating it into something else, into marks on the paper, rather than ink pixels that have been combined in a certain way to create a photo. So I find the concept of translation really helpful in this process of changing something from one form into another. One visual representation of reality changed into a different representation of that re reality. Now, how do I do that? Well, I observe and I think and I decide what marks I need to place on my paper, where I need to place them how I need to place them, what marks I need to place to build up to create an overall effect. And this is the hard part of drawing, the 80 or 90% of it that happens before we put any ink on the paper, before we even pick up our pen, possibly. But everything else depends on this. I don't know where to put the marks, how to put them, how to combine them together, why to put them here, why to put them here or there. If my brain hasn't worked out what it's doing, its strategy for translation for this particular scene in this particular drawing with whatever 
media I'm using and whatever time frame I have to do it in. And yet everything depends on this. I reckon 80 to 90% of the drawing challenge happens in our mind. It includes our observation because that's part of working out what we're trying to do, how we're trying to do it. What this means is that if I don't like my drawing, if I don't like the overall effect that I've created, the scene that's in front of me, it's almost certainly not so much because I've lacked the technical skills to put the marks on the paper in the right way, but I haven't actually been able to work out what marks to put on the paper, how to put them there. My strategy, my planning was not up to the task. And so I was lost in a way, just rambling over the paper with my pen to a degree because I didn't have the guidance I needed from my brain, from all the creative thought processes that need to happen first. So can you understand now the problem why copying doesn't actually help us the way we think it might when we copy other drawings? Because when I'm doing that, I'm copying the creative thinking of the original artist. I'm not having to do any of that myself. I can start at their 90% point, if you like, of their drawing process. And that makes it easier for me because the marks on the paper is not the difficult part. It's knowing where to put them and how to put them and, and what to put. So we've just copied their translation. We've not learnt or developed or relied on any of our own translation ability skills to do it. And so nothing's really changed in terms of my mind, in terms of the 80 to 90% of the drawing process, which is why my drawings continue to look the same and why I continue to have the same struggles I had before I copied. The only skill I might have developed in copying other artists' drawings is the skill of copying, which is a skill, but it's not a particularly important one for creating my own original drawings. So how can we benefit from the work of the artists who inspire us? Firstly, I think it's helpful to remind ourselves that what we want probably isn't available. What we want is really a shortcut, an immediate, a fast track way for our drawings to look as good as the drawings of someone who may have been drawing consistently for 10, 20, 30, 40 years to get to the place they're at in their drawing. I have to be realistic. There is no magic shortcut for anyone with drawing. We all have to go on our journey. And we don't all start in the same place. And for different reasons, we may travel on our journey faster or slower than others. I hope my videos help make it a faster journey for at least part of the way for most of you. And if my videos are helpful for you, please hit the like button right now for me. One of the ways I think I was most benefited from the artist's work, the artist's drawings particularly, that inspired me was that it showed me what can be done. It showed me what can be done with a pencil, with a pen, with pastels, with oil paint. It showed me what's possible because I could look at their marks, however they were formed, and I could, I could see the elements that made them up, the same elements, the same materials that I have available for me. So that firstly is, I think, the most immediate an obvious way I can benefit simply by encouragement. They had a brain, eyes, a hand, and I have those. They had a pen and paper, and I have those. So my task is not impossible, even though some days it may feel so. But I mustn't underestimate, particularly if I'm relatively early in my drawing career, that I'm probably inspired by artworks that came well into the maturity of their drawing career. Of their drawing time. The one thing I did with these drawings that so inspired me though, which I found very helpful, was to really examine how did they do what they did. Not trying to copy it, but trying to understand it. Because the one helpful thing I could get from their drawings was anything that helped me to understand the process of mark making, the effects of marks, the way marks could be put together, because these are the things 
I need to understand, I need to have in my head swirling around as possibilities that I can filter and choose from when I'm creating my own drawing. It's not where they put the marks on the paper in this particular drawing that I need to be able to do. It's understanding what possibilities there are for mark making for what effects. I need, I want to understand what they were thinking, the options they had in their mind to choose from, and then to be able to consider why they chose them in this instance. Because in that way, I'm building up understanding in my mind. And while there is no shortcut, fast track for having my drawings look like theirs now, I can benefit immensely by feeding my understanding of how marks create effects by studying their work. Now, it's most helpful if I can see the reference that they've used, but probably that's not going to be the case. Because if I can see what they're translating from, it helps me understand even further the translation process that they've gone through in their mind, having seen this, to now represent it through their marks as this. But even if I can't see what they are copying, I can still see how they have created effect, what they've done to do that, and I can start to not copy that, but absorb the understanding of that into my thinking. And it's from that place, it's from my thinking place, that my marks will come for the next original drawing I try to do. And this is why I say when you watch my videos, never draw along with me. Because we only have so much concentration, we only have so much time we can spend paying attention in a certain way or ways at any one point with any one thing. And if you're trying to draw what I'm drawing at the same time, in the end, you're probably not going to have time to pay attention to my reference to see exactly why I'm putting these marks, what I'm translating from. You're probably not going to have time or the full attention to even listen to what I'm saying where I'm trying to explain my process. My voiceovers are always trying to explain my process of drawing so that you can understand the why, you can understand the sorts of questions I ask, you can understand the sorts of decisions I'm making and the effects I'm hoping to create and then together we can see whether that's achieved or not. And just as importantly, when they don't work, while I'm still progressing the drawing, you can hear my rearranging of my thoughts now, my will I change this or change that? All of these things that are part of the process as we continue through the drawing time period. What will certainly happen to some degree, if not to a large degree, is that in the end your focus will be simply on the end of my pen and the marks they're making in relation to the marks I've already made and be seeking to copy that disconnected from my thought processes, my reasoning that I'm explaining in the dialogue. I hope you can see that by trying to get, in a sense, a better drawing more quickly, we're actually short-circuiting our learning process, the learning of understanding the process of how we translate one visual representation, say a photo, into another, such as a drawing. It's the understanding that tells me where to put the marks, and that's the hard part to learn. But the good news is, the sooner we start to try and learn it and work on it, the better we become. And being inspired by the work of other artists can help us to do that and seeking to understand why they've put their marks the way they have in the places they have and the effects they've created and why they appeal to us. Seeking to understand that rather than copy it is an incredibly helpful way to use their work for my own creative benefit to have my drawings in the end look better because this understanding of their work will help give me greater depth in my thinking, in my understanding, in my options when I now go to do my own. I won't be copying their style, but their style in some way, maybe even noticeably, will be informing my style. But it will be my style because it's come from my understanding. And that's what we want. We want our style to develop. 
G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. I hope this has been helpful. It can be a bit of a contentious issue. I probably get more comments on my thoughts on copying the works of other artists. And look, it's not necessarily an unhelpful thing when we're some considerable distance down our drawing journey. But it's a very unhelpful thing to do at the start. It can even slow us down to the point of discouragement where the gap between what we can copy and what we can do ourselves becomes so great that we just think it's all too hard and we give up. But if we understand the process, we can make it work to our advantage. I hope this video has been to your advantage, but look, whatever you draw, however you draw it, make sure you have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.